Isometric cameras can add a lot of character to your game. I'm going to show you how to properly make one, how to add panning, how to add zooming, and how to add rotation. Let's get started. We'll start with a new scene in a new project. I'd like to add some test objects so that we have something to test the camera view with. Create a new game object and call it isometric camera. Make sure it's at 0, 0, 0. Then place the main camera inside of it. Also, make sure that the main camera is at 0, 0, 0. Then we will give the camera a rotation of 30 on the X and 45 on the Y. You can adjust these rotations a little if you like, depending on your game and the view that you're trying to convey. The next step will have to be repeated if you come back and change those angles, at least the way we're doing it right now. You can, of course, set up a script to do this part for you, but for the simplicity of the tutorial, we're going to do it manually. With the main camera selected, we are going to make sure that our transform is set to pivot and to local at the top of the scene view. This allows the forward of the camera to point towards the rotation that we set. We can then move it using its forward arrow. This allows us to pull the camera back while maintaining its correct rotation and having it point towards its parent. Like I said before, this is something we could set up a script for later. Now, we can't miss the most important part. We need to click the main camera and set its projection to orthographic. And just like that, we have an isometric camera. That's great, but we need to do more. Next, we'll set up panning for the camera. We will be using the input system that comes standard with Unity. If you want to use the new input system, which I highly recommend, it's extremely easy to convert, but that could be a whole tutorial on its own, so we won't do that right now. We'll make a script folder, then create a new script. Call it isometric camera panner. Then you can attach a script to the isometric camera object we created earlier, not the main camera itself, but its parent. In the update function, we'll first get a new vector two, which I'm calling pan position. The X value of pan position will be the horizontal axis, which we can get using input.getAccess and passing horizontal as the parameter. Then we can get the Y value using the vertical axis. Then we simply add this new vector two to the transforms position. We can see that it works, but it is way too fast. Let's add in a speed value that we can control in the inspector. And we'll also make sure to use time.delta time so that it's the same speed no matter what kind of frame rate the player is getting. This is much better, but there is an issue, at least for me. Depending on your game, this might actually be preferred. When I hit left, it's actually going down and left diagonally because of the rotation and angle of the camera. When I hit right, it's going up and right diagonally. This is fine if it's on purpose, but I would rather left be left, up be up, etc. So I'm simply going to use the camera's rotation in the equation to achieve this. First, I get the camera in the awake function. You could also get the transform. You don't have to get the camera. Then at the start of my equation, I will use its rotation. So I'll make a new quaternion using quaternion.euler, which lets me pass in a vector three for the rotation. The vector three will be zero, then the camera's current Euler angle Y, and then zero. Now, when we go back to our game, left is left, right is right, and it all makes sense. So now we have panning. Let's keep going. Let's make another script because it's nice to have things separated into nice scripts that we can enable, disable if we want to. Let's call it isometric camera zoom. In this script, we will want to control a few things. Let's make sure we have a minimum zoom, a maximum zoom, a zoom speed, and a zoom smoothness. Last but not least, We'll have to keep track of the current zoom and we will need the camera again so we can change its orthographic size to control the zoom. In the update function, we will set our current zoom to change based on the Y value of input dot mouse scroll delta. Essentially, what this means is every time we use the mouse wheel, it measures how far we scrolled that frame and we will apply it to the zoom value using zoom speed and time dot delta time. Then we're going to clamp it all using mathf dot clamp. It will be clamped between the min zoom and the max zoom. Once we have that little equation, we will do a lerp between the current camera orthographic size and the new one, which is going to be what current zoom is used for. This will give us a smooth zoom feel. So we say camera dot orthographic size is equal to mathf dot lerp. Then that needs three parameters, the current orthographic size, the new size, which is the current zoom, 
and then the zoom smoothness and time.delta time. This smoothly translates the zoom for us from the old zoom to the new zoom, each frame. Oops, I made a mistake. Instead of changing the current zoom based on the mouse delta, I was setting it to the mouse delta. So let's just add current zoom in and subtract the mouse delta from it to get the desired result. You might have to tweak the values in the inspector from the default we put in, but it works. We're gonna take one final leap here and we're going to add rotation. We're going to allow the player to rotate the camera while holding down right click and moving their mouse left to right. But first, I thought of one thing that we forgot, panning limits. Let's quickly go back to the panning script and do that. So when the player is panning, we don't want them to pan forever. They might get lost. So let's open up our panning script and create two vector twos at the top, one for pan limit X and one for pan limit Z. And then we'll simply add one more line at the bottom of that update function. What this line does is it takes a new position, then clamps its X within the limits we set using pan limit X and then takes the Z position and clamps the limits from what we set in pan limit Z. So if we set pan limit X to say negative 10 and 10, the player will never be able to go past those values when panning the camera. Let's try it out and make sure it works. And it does. Okay, let's finish this off and get this camera rotating. You guessed it, let's make a new script and call it isometric camera rotation. We'll only need one value here, rotation speed. Then in the update function, we'll make an if statement that will run only when the player is holding down mouse button one, which is right click. If they are, we'll set a float called mouse delta x, and this float will be created using input.getAccess, and then we'll pass in mouse x as the parameter. Then we simply use transform.rotate. This can be used a few different ways, but the way we are going to use it is to pass in an axis, which in this case will be vector3.up, the world vector3.up. We do this because we want the camera to rotate around the world's up axis. If you select the isometric camera parent, you can see its up axis, the green arrow. We want to rotate around that. Then we simply set the second parameter to be the mouse delta x multiplied by rotation speed. And I made another mistake. We should have time.delta time multiplied in this equation. This will stop it from rotating too fast or too slow if a player's frame rate is different. It works. We can rotate, we can pan, and we can zoom. Now that's an isometric camera.